I know what you might be thinking. I already have too many WordPress themes to learn and I don't wanna learn a new one. But here's why this Bricks Builder review is going to convince you to maybe give Bricks a try. So I know you've got tons of options to choose from from builders. You've got Elementor, you've got Divi, you've got Beaver Builder, and a ton of other ones too. So why would you consider Bricks Builder? I'm Natalie Lucier, founder of Access Ally, which is a WordPress-based online course and membership and community solution for coaches and those who want to serve them and help them grow their coaching businesses. So if you are a developer, a web designer, or a person who likes to build their own websites, then you need to know about Bricks Builder because I think it is really bringing the leading edge in terms of design flexibility and fast loading options to WordPress. So with more competing platforms like Webflow, Wix, Squarespace, people have so many options when it comes to designing their websites. And sometimes people who are coming to WordPress are a little bit stumped with all the different options and how to really make their website look exactly how they want it to look without learning how to code or do a ton of stuff. So this is where I think Bricks really shines. It is coming from that developer standpoint, but it's flexible and easy enough to use that even a non-developer can use it to build really good looking websites. So we're gonna get right into the review now. I'll show you how Bricks Builder works and you can really see it in action to decide if it's right for you. So one of the things that I really like about Bricks Builder is how it is really focused on loading quickly and visually creating your website in a way that Google and other search engines will appreciate because it loads fast, it's efficient, and it uses all of the latest and best practices. So I'm definitely gonna show you how it works. It is a little bit more designer friendly, but it is amazing even if you're not a designer. You just have to learn how it works and really get into it. The other thing I wanna make sure that you know about is that there's a full Bricks Builder Academy, so they talk about all of the details of using Bricks, but this is gonna be a quick get started tutorial for you. So one of the most important things to know about Bricks Builder is that it is an actual theme and not a plugin. So there are a lot of great builder plugins, but what we're going to do right now is we're gonna go under our themes and this happens to be a multi-site, but we're gonna go under add new and themes and upload the theme. So Bricks Builder is a premium theme that you have to purchase. And I'm also going to install the Bricks Builder child theme. So that means if I do end up making any changes to specific things and a Bricks changes, I can update to the latest version of Bricks, but then my child theme will also keep all of the settings that I have in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload the child theme as well. And that's what I recommend that you do too, because that will save you from having your site reset with any of the settings that you specifically chose and that will just help you if you're making any customizations to your theme. So we've gone ahead and installed Bricks Builder. You can see here I'm going to ahead and activate the child theme as my theme on this site. So now you can see all of the welcome things and we're gonna go ahead and dive in now. Now we're going to activate the license, paste it in, and we're ready to go. You'll see a new area called Bricks here and one of the things I want to focus on is the templates page because Bricks has really powerful ways of creating templates that you can use across different pages. For example, your blog posts can all look the same based on a template that you create here. You can also import them from different sites. So if you're working on a different site and you wanna import it and stuff like that. It's very, very useful too. You can also take a look at the settings and the custom fonts, but I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of the most important things for bricks. So one of them is that you can create your header and footer right here inside of the template areas. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you this. I'm going to click on edit with bricks. And you can see here, I'm editing our header. So I have our logo, our navigation menu, and our call to action button. So you can see here, our navigation menu is chosen from our WordPress menus, which we can have more than one of. You can also decide how you want it to look. So if I want it to be top to bottom or horizontal, you can also change margins, typography, all of that stuff for your menu here. And the same goes with the sub menu. And you can also enable a mobile menu to show up. So this is really helpful 
by default and Brix is also working on some different options for mobile menus as well. But you can see here, you have the elements area. So this is where you can add different types of elements. So if I wanted to add another button or if I wanted to add an icon or an image or something else, this is where we go ahead and add some of these things here. So I'm going to show you how to add a logo and you can see now it's, <laughs> it's showing up there. But if I click here, I can choose an image for my logo. I've got my access ally one here, but let's say if there's another logo on my site I wanted to use. Um, obviously, I don't own any of these trademarks, but you know, for example, <laughs> you could design your website that way. And you can also change the height and all of those other things here, right here with your different settings. And then also this style area is really interesting because you can add extra padding or margin. You can also um, change if you want to add a background color or anything like that right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this, but this is how you were able to change your headers. And you can also have more than one header. And so the cool thing here is if you go under settings and then under template settings, my header here is also um, located at the top. It has a header and sticky on scroll. So that means when you scroll, it will stay at the top. You can also change that background. Now this is where the interesting part with conditions come in. So let's say you wanted a different header for your blog than from your main site. So you could add a condition here and say, um, you know, right now it's showing for the entire site, but let's say maybe my front page or um, my posts would have this menu. So if I do this, then it means it will only show for these ones. Um, and if I wanted to exclude that one, then I could go ahead and, and tick that off. So that would mean I would have a different menu that I would have to specify a condition for just like this for my blog pages or my blog posts. So I'm going to delete this because I do want this across the whole site for now. Um, but you can see this is very, very powerful to be able to specify on a per page or per type of page template settings. The other thing you can see here is you can hit save and I'm going to go under templates. So this is another way of getting to the templates. So these are all the templates that I have on this particular website. You can also look up um, different types of templates. I'm going to look for my footer and then I will um, go ahead and edit this one. So you can see now I'm editing this footer and I have all of my nav menus. I have my backgrounds here and all of these things. So now the other section I want you to know about is the theme styles section. So this is great. You can actually create several styles. I've already created one called access ally style. And then what you do here is you decide if you want this to apply across the entire website like earlier, or if you want it to be specific to certain pages, and then you can come in and change all of the default default settings, which would have usually been under the site customizer in WordPress, but now this is done completely in Bricks Builder. So you can see what are our primary colors. So we have our aqua, our light color, our dark color. We could add a couple more colors in here too. Um, you can also change what links look like. You can change the typography and what all of those look like as well. And then um, you can see here all of the different types of elements. You can actually come in here and update. So for me, I have a board border and a radius. So all of my buttons have these little rounded corners on them. And you can see you can make all of these different changes. And also this is the interesting thing is that you have different buttons by default. So you can have the primary button, a secondary button and a light button and a dark button. And then when you are creating buttons, so let's go ahead and add one right now, just to show you what that looks like. Um, we can actually specify which type of button that will be. So this right now is using the primary button. So that's what I had specified for my primary button, but you can also have using the secondary button, you can use a light button, a dark button. Uh, and so you can really change what those look like in those page settings themselves. So this is super powerful. That way, when you are making these changes, it will update across your site and you don't have to come and update all the buttons and all the styles individually. You can just do it right here under settings and theme styles. So I highly recommend that you dig into this area a little bit more and specify things that you want to apply across your entire site using bricks. Now here under pages, you can see all of your pages that you have on your site. And I'm going to go ahead and edit this testimony page that I'm currently working on and show you some examples of other things you can do using Bricks Builder. So here you can see I have a post type of content where we can basically query 
using the post type that we're looking for. So in my case, I'm actually querying case studies, but you could go in and do posts or pages or any other type of content that you have on your site. You can decide how you want to organize them, how many per page, and then you can include or exclude specific ones. And then you can also add a taxonomy query. So for me, I'm actually uh, letting people choose by type of case study. And then that gives us a cool little section at the top here. And then this is where you can choose the layout. So do I want masonry? Do I want a grid? Um, how do I want this to look? And also uh, I could be a list, for example, I can decide if I want this to be vertical or not. I can also change the way that images show up. So if I wanted to disable the image and just have text, I could do that as well. I could also change the height and size of the image. So by default, maybe we want it to be a medium image. Um, oh, that actually made it very blurry. <laughs> so maybe we want it to be medium large since it is a pretty big image there. And you can see here that um, I'm gonna go back to masonry since it was just nicer that way. You can see here, you can change the way that the content aligns. So if we want to do top left, or if we wanted to do um, top center, for example, you can start to see things look a little bit different as we make these changes. And the same goes for what we want to include. We want the title right now, an excerpt, and then the read more button. And um, you can also change if you wanted to filter things in a specific way. And so you can see this loop functionality here is super powerful. And then from there, you can also change. For example, I have my little border box here with the rounded corners and then a box shadow. So you can also do that um, right in here onto these sections. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about another thing that I absolutely love about Bricks, which is their built-in classes. So if you're familiar with CSS, then you know you can create classes that will apply across different elements on your site. And usually you would create them here under CSS, or maybe you have another place where you would put CSS code. But with Bricks, you don't need to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some of these settings and I'm going to create them in a class. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of this styling and I'm going to remove the padding as well. And let's just check here. Yes, I'm gonna keep those for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a testimonial container on pink. Okay, so what I've gone ahead here is I've named a new class. So I'm gonna hit create. So now all of the changes that I'm making here are going to be part of that class. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-add that padding. So that adds the padding here. Then I'm going to go and add my background color and then our border. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done is added all of these things to testimonial container on pink. So now I'm gonna remove again the same things i had in here remove we can completely remove this and then when i want to reuse that i can call this uh, i can just grab that testimonial container on pink class now that's going to apply automatically so what's the benefit of doing this is that i can then come in and make changes and it will apply to both of these boxes so just to give you an example here if i were to change this to green See, they both get updated and I only have to edit this class once. Uh, and so this is a super powerful way of actually updating your whole site when you wanna make changes. And these classes are really powerful. Um, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel on all your different pages. You can just use the exact same class and you can add more than one class as well. So right now I'm editing this particular class, but let's say I wanted to add another class and um, I'm not 100% sure. So this is gonna change how, yeah, it, that one doesn't quite make sense because it's another background one. Um, but I can go in here and um, edit which classes are on here. So let's say I don't want this gray background one anymore. Um, I can actually remove it. Deleting it would delete it across the site. So I don't recommend that, but you can remove it. And so now it's no longer applying to this particular block anymore. So this is super powerful. And that's one of the things I wish I knew about Bricks when I first started building Bricks websites, because it's so powerful and you can come in and edit the, these classes and make things look great by just clicking on here. And then um, you can go ahead and edit this. So now we're active. So everything I make in terms of changes will apply to both of these classes too. So that is in a nutshell, what I wanted to show you about Bricks Builder. There's so much you can do here. You can drag and drop things, move things around and, you know, really get to know the whole 
the whole builder and make things way, way easier on yourself for building. Um, and also the same goes for templates. You can save a page as a template super easily like this. You can also replace content and import images from an existing template and replace what you've got on this particular page. You can also import and export templates. So this means you can actually uh, work on a staging site or another website and then import things as well, which is super, super powerful. So I would say these are some of the highlights of using Bricks Builder and I hope you give this a go. I think it's such a great way to build websites and really make things awesome. So I hope this quick Bricks Builder tour and review was helpful for you. If you're still trying to decide whether WordPress or Webflow is for you, watch that other video now. And if you're a web developer, find out how to increase your web design business by watching my web design business mistakes and lessons video here. And I will catch you in the next one.